Hi, this is Tim Merton, author of Statistics in Plain English, and in this lesson we are going to calculate and interpret a, an independent samples t-test. Now, I went to graduate school in Michigan, and um, they're very proud of their lakes in Michigan. Um, but in New York, especially upstate New York, western New York, they're very proud of their lakes too, the Finger Lakes area. Um, it's a beautiful area. And so I'm just making up data, pretending that we're going to have a little competition between the cleanliness or the water quality of Michigan lakes compared to New York lakes. And suppose that I got a random sample of water samples from 25 uh, lakes selected randomly in the state of Michigan and 25 lakes selected randomly in the state of New York and I test the water quality in those two samples. And on a scale from 1 to 20, let's say Michigan's water quality has an average score of 15 with a standard deviation of 5. And New York has an average quality, water quality of 12 with a standard deviation of 7. So how do we find out whether these two sample means, which we can see the sample means are different, but what we want to test is with the um, independent samples t-test is whether that difference in the sample means is statistically significant. In other words, does the difference that we observe in our two sample means um, have implications or hold for the two populations that are being compared? Can we generalize from the samples up to the populations? That's why you do a t-test. So to calculate a t-test, first you need to calculate um, the standard errors for each of the two samples. Now notice, my sample sizes are equal, so I can use sort of the easy formula for calculating the uh, um, standard error of the pooled variance. Here's how we do it. First we calculate a standard error for this sample. Standard deviation over the square root of the sample size. Then we calculate the standard error for the New York sample. Those are our two standard errors. Um, next, to calculate the standard error of the difference between the means, we square each of our standard errors and add them together. Okay, so the sum of our squared standard errors is 2.96, and then um, to find the standard error, of the difference between the means, we take the square root of that. And we have 1.72. So the standard error of the difference between the means is 1.72. Now we can plug that into our um, t formula and get an observed t value. Okay, so that was the um, standard error of the difference between the sample means that we calculated, 1.72. The observed t-value is going to be one sample mean minus the other sample mean. Fifteen minus twelve divided by that standard error of the difference between the means.
So our observed t-value is 3 divided by 1.72, and that's 1.74. Now, is that a statistically significant t-value? Well, to find that out, first we need to find the critical t-value in appendix T. And to do that, we need to know a few things. One are degrees of freedom. The degrees of freedom for an independent samples t-test is the sample size of one sample plus the sample size of another sample, minus 2. 25 plus 25 minus 2 is 50 minus 2 is 48. So our degrees of freedom for this problem is 48. Now we need to decide whether we're doing a one-tailed test or a two-tailed test. Uh, this depends on the research question. If the research question is, I wonder whether, I wonder whether Michigan lakes are, have higher water quality than New York lakes. That's a one-tailed question because it's only speculating that Michigan will be higher than New York, not that it will be lower. On the other hand, if our research question is, I wonder whether there's a difference in the water quality of Michigan lakes and New York lakes. That's a two-tailed question. The difference could go in either direction. Um, let's look up the um, critical t-values for both. And let's use an alpha level of 0.05. For a one-tailed test with an alpha level of 0.05 and 48 degrees of freedom, uh, in appendix B, there is no 48 degrees of freedom. The closest we can find to that, um, and without going above that, is 40. So with 40 degrees of freedom, Two-tailed test, alpha level 0.05, we get a critical t-value of 2.021. For a one-tailed test with 40 degrees of freedom and alpha level 0.05, we get a critical t-value of 1.684. Two-tailed, one-tailed. Now, something interesting is happening. Our observed t-value is going to be statistically significant if we are using a one-tailed test. If we're using a two-tailed test, our observed t-value is smaller than our critical t-value, and it wouldn't be statistically significant. This is a little bit of the controversy around whether you use a one-tailed test or a two-tailed test. <clears throat> it is generally speaking easier to find statistically significant results using a one-tailed test, as you can see in this example. Um, most statisticians are not in favor of one-tailed tests for this reason. It produces um, too many false positives, too many times where you conclude the results are statistically significant, when perhaps they shouldn't be. I think it's generally a good idea to use a two-tailed test, um, but you have to be cognizant of what's the research question. Is the research question a one-tailed research question or a two-tailed? Let's say that this is a two-tailed research question. Is there a difference in the water quality of Michigan lakes compared to um, New York lakes? Our observed t-value here is is less than our critical t-value. And we would conclude that our result is not statistically significant. Although there is a difference in the sample means, we are not prepared to conclude that there is a difference between the population means of water quality of New York, New York State lakes and Michigan lakes, because our results were not statistically significant. Therefore, we're going to conclude there is no difference in the average water quality of New York lakes and Michigan lakes. Um, our results were too likely due to chance or random sampling error for us to rule out chances the reason why we got this difference in our sample means. And that is how you calculate a, an independent samples t-test and how you interpret the results. Hope that's helpful.